<coughs> good afternoon friends and uh, let me thank uh, nitin for this uh, wonderful opportunity and i'm going to talk to you on a very important topic uh, there is a hole in the bucket the pc run during fico how do you manage this these are my financial interests so how many of you have not had pcr at all i want to know before i start the talk anybody has not had pcr okay there are only two things if you have not had pcr one you are telling lies second you are not doing cataract surgery okay that day in amritsar i was presenting on sardar ji put up his hand and said i have not had pcr in my life then we found out he was an ent surgeon he has come he has come because his wife was an ophthalmologist there so that's the only way you can have so the thing is anticipate pcr in these conditions when you have a traumatic cataract when you have a, a posterior polar hard brown cataract pseudo exfoliation and post vitrectomized eyes now nowadays we have patients who are coming with repeated injections of lucentis or avastin you need to be a little careful about these patients you need to have a plan for these patients so if you understand this slide okay this animation about pcr then i can stop talking here because this is the most important thing when you have a pcr if you have a coaxial irrigation aspiration coaxial means the irrigation aspiration are in the same port what will happen the vitreous is like a tsunami okay more and more vitreous will start coming into the anterior chamber it will hydrate the vitreous and what is a small pc tear will become a very huge pc tear but when you have a pcr if you stabilize that globe which i am going to tell you how to do it and then go in for a bimanual bimanual means the irrigation and aspiration are separated the irrigation is on a left the aspiration is a water it is the or the cutter uh, so the irrigation aspiration are separated the irrigation actually tamponades the break prevents the hydration of vitreous and whatever vitreous is there in the anterior chamber you can just uh, pupillary area you can just cut it off so this is what you should not do but many of us do you can see here what is the most important thing is, is to don't pull out if you pull out what will happen is the pc tear becomes a huge when you say you become jittery because you may be operating on a vip patient or a doctor then you go by manual and what happens to the nucleus which is gone in okay depending on whatever karma you have done okay the nucleus will come up okay depends on the karma that is very important so this is a nucleus by missing by luck it came up but more importantly i think the message is very clear that you need to be by manual go by manual and remove the vitreous first and then remove the cortex so i'm just going to show you this is a patient who had a pcr you can see that pc tear and uh, it's like a posterior capsular rex is there and uh, this is one of the former union ministers and you, as you know these politicians commit lot of sins and then come to you and then this pcr occurred and uh, he had a very brown cataract immediately what i did was i injected viscoat i injected viscoat the uh, i don't have any financial interest the alcon guys are not paying a single paisa to me so the viscoat what happens it goes and plugs the pc tear okay and then shift sit back and relax and then shift to the right uh, side board and then uh, uh, go ahead and uh, remove the uh, cortex uh, uh, remove the vit if the vitreous is there at that time you know about 15 20 years back the tricot was not available so the message is very clear that you need to put viscoat come out of the eyes gently reduce the bottle light and then don't come out without filling the visco elastic this is very important if it is a small pc tear you can convert that into a posterior capsular excess okay because the posterior capsular excess has got a much better strength than your pc tear if you try to put a lens in the bag in the presence of a pc tear that pc tear will extend and the whole lens will go into the vitreous cavity uh, if not on the table the next day it will go so uh, i think it's important that you do a small posterior capsular excess very important again and you can see this is a patient who had a ppc you can see the plaque on the posterior capsule as i was trying to remove the uh, epinucleus there is a sudden deepening of the pc you see the pc tear has occurred immediately i put try we put viscoat and then immediately put tricot why pre tricot because tricot delineates the vitreous it's important to have the tricot there preservative free tricot is available for all of us and then i'm removing the vitreous first and then removing the cortex 
and if, if at all there is some vitreous, I just remove it off then. But don't remove the cortex in the presence of the vitreous. Why? Because you don't want to produce any traction on the vitreous base. So every time you do that, you produce traction on the vitreous base and post-operative these patients can develop retinal attachment, retinal tests in the periphery as well. So I'm putting a lens, a multi-piece lens. You should need to, you have all these lenses in your armamentarium, in your OT. This is a patient who had a posterior polar cataract, mature cataract, okay? If you have a mature cataract, you do not know whether it's a posterior polar cataract because, but look at the fellow eye. If the fellow eye has got some lens in the sulcus or an AC, I will, uh, it's called lens, then it's always, so obviously this patient had a posterior polar cataract, you can see here, very typically, what do you see? You see, it's not a posterior capsule tear. It's like a posterior capsule degescence, which is very, very typical of this uh, posterior polar cataract. This is a degescence. This is a congenital degescence. It's like two pillars on the posterior capsule. And immediately, I put viscode there. And then I did femto for this patient catalyst. And uh, I went in and do, did a... See, as long as uh, uh, the, see, the, the anterior vitreous phase is intact. So I was a little more uh, uh, overzealous. And you can see and try to remove that cortex, which is actually stupid of me to do, have done it. You can see that once I've done it, I ruptured the anti-hyaloid and the vitreous started coming out. You can see that there's a hole in the anti-hyaloid and I, obviously we need to do a vitrectomy. No using sponges, no using scissors, only automated vitrector. Okay, that is very important again. So have a bimanual, that is irrigation and you can have an anterior chamber maintainer. And then go ahead and you can see how I'm removing the vitreous and subsequently I put a lens in the sulcus and capturing it in the back. So the another patient can see here again a posterior capsule, uh, posterior polar cataract and uh, so far so good, it's going on very well. As I'm removing the, uh, uh, what you call the, uh, the epinucleus pate, you can see that he's actually an ophthalmologist uh, from Tamil Nadu and uh, I was operating young fellow. So I told him about the consult him pre-operative. You can see there is a huge PC tear. It's not a PC tear, again a degescence. I injected viscode, then immediately shifted bimanual. Then I, uh, once I found out that vitreous is there, I did uh, use the cutter and then went ahead and you uh, removed the vitreous. Use a high cutting rate. All the machines are now equipped with uh, high cutting rate machines. 23 gauge uh, cutters are available. 3000 cutting rate. Cut and move forward, don't cut and pull. So if you want to remove the vitreous, uh, which is very important. Use tricot. Even God cannot see the vitreous in the anterior chamber without tricot. So you need to make sure that use tricot there and uh, remove the vitreous and then remove the cortex there. You can see that uh, the capsulorex is intact, but you can see the two pillars on the posterior capsule, very typical of a degescence in a posterior, cap posterior polar cataract. Again, putting a lens, you can see here, put the lens in the sulcus, but don't, don't leave it in the sulcus. Again, very important. The haptic is in the sulcus, this is a three-piece lens, MA60 lens, and the optic goes into the back, into the capsulorexis margin. This is called the optic capture or locking this lens. If you lock this lens, this lens will not move a micron and uh, for several years together. Otherwise, if you put it in the sulcus over a period of time, it can decenter or it can also produce what is called UGH syndrome. And uh, you can see here, uh, this is a locking of the lens. The ovalization of the anterior capsule is something which is... Uh, very, very important again. Again, another patient who, uh, who had a posterior polar cataract, I'll just take another one minute, Tinitin, and uh, you can see here, I'm doing a bimanual irrigation aspiration and uh, going ahead. And in this case, I was able to, this actually a doctor and uh, uh, again, uh, general medical doctor. And uh, you can see here, I'm keeping that anterior hyaloid intact. How? Because repeatedly I put viscote. When you put viscote and use an irrigation aspiration, Make sure that your aspiration flow rate is not very high. If you have very high, because the viscoat can get aspirated. Now and then, you have to put viscoat. You can see here, I was able to put the lens in the in the sulcus and then capture it in the back. So again, pass plana, anterior vitrectomy or pass plana, all these are things to go. These are take a message, small PCR, convert to PCC. Do not pull out, inject viscoat, use tricot, preservative free, bimanual, automated, anterior vitrectomy, limbal or pass plana. Whatever you are comfortable, remove the vitreous first and then remove the cortex and epinucleus. Appropriate eye oil depending on whatever you feel. Suture the wounds because when you have vitreous loss, 
and PCR, the incidence of end of thermitis goes up by about four to five times. I always suture my wounds uh, because they can be micro leaks. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much, Nitin. Thank you, Mohan.